Okay, boys and girls, we're talking about my favorite Alaskan wilderness folder, or what I think kind of makes the Alaskan wilderness folder. Now, understand that this is probably going to be a contentious video, and that definitely not everyone will agree with my pick, but I wanted to pick this knife in particular because I feel like it embodies Alaska or... Alaska, not just in the wilderness ways, but also in the legal sense as well. And so I'll kind of talk about what led me to this choice and why I think that this is actually a pretty cool wilderness folder. Now, I'm not necessarily expecting anyone to go out and buy a Benchmade Auto Adamus just so they can carry it outside. This is definitely a part of my EDC collection, but I think that this is a pretty cool wilderness folder, and if you can swing the $300 plus dollars that this knife is, you will not be disappointed. So without any further ado, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and let's talk about why this is the Alaskan wilderness folder. So this knife, I believe, embodies Alaska more than it is from a purely functional standpoint. You know, if I wanted a wilderness folder, I'd probably say go get a GEC uh, pocket carver, um, which is another knife that I do often carry in the wild. But this blade right here, I think more than just being a cool knife or a functional blade, it embodies kind of Alaska. And what I mean by that is, is that the 2750 or the 2750, whatever you want to call it, the auto version of the 275 Adamus is a tank of a knife, and it's not the largest or most tanky mm -hmm. blade that Benchmade has ever made, but it it is pretty tanky, pretty overbuilt, pretty robust, and I think that that kind of is something you need, or at least something you appreciate when you're out in the middle of nowhere, and say you have to baton your folder every once in a while, or you need it for some pretty industrial task. In addition to that, though, this knife is, you know, a pretty tanky build, it's pretty serious, you know, pretty thick, pretty robust, um, and it also feels good in the hand, you know, oftentimes we wear gloves out in the wilderness, you know, we're manhandling all kinds of trees and plants and such, uh, so this blade works very well for that, you know, it feels good in a gloved hand, it's definitely large enough to accommodate even a larger hand, um, you know, it has pretty good controls, and, you know, it's not a very fine, you know, you don't need dexterity to close any kind of locking uh, components, you know, the axis lock on this can be easily uh, engaged or disengaged while wearing gloves, and uh, the spring certainly makes it a little bit of a challenge to close, but it can be done one-handed. Like I said, even while wearing gloves, it's very easy to engage and disengage the lock. Uh, so it just makes a lot of sense from a practical standpoint that this blade is not very, you know, fine or very uh, ginger, if you will. This is a very much robust and kind of burly blade. But in addition to that, you know, there is a standard 275. This is the auto. And the reason why I chose the auto for this specific example is because here in Alaska, we are one of the few states that you can legally carry autos. And when I mean autos, I'm not talking about those tiny, you know, California legal autos that are like under an inch kind of blade length garbage. You know, like you can legally carry, especially out in the wilderness, you know, a pretty sizable uh, automatic knife like this. You know, you can carry something that has a real blade to it, you know, a real actual automatic knife. And so that's why I wanted to, you know, feature the auto kind of functionality with this blade is because not only is this a pretty robust and sturdy knife and the auto axis is lends its hand to being abused but at the same time too uh, like I said it is pretty cool that you can carry an auto legally in Alaska so I felt like it at least deserves a mention even if this probably wouldn't be your first place you know wilderness folder and admittedly like I said it's a little bit of an expensive knife to carry in the wild but it is a very functional and very um, serviceable blade if you do feel like running a $300 knife outside. You know, the CPM crew wear is going to be a very solid and very durable steel uh, that's going to hold an edge for a very long time and be reasonably resistant to any kind of torture uh, that it will face. And even if it doesn't face any torture, like I said, it will hold an edge for a very long time. Crew wear is very durable. Um, so there's that added perk to it, and you know between the um, between the Cerakoted blade and uh, that steel, you're gonna have a very long-lasting, 
very resistant to rust, very resistant to wear, you know, just overall durable knife that is an automatic. So I think that this is a pretty sweet Alaskan blade. It kind of uh, reminds me of the blade that, you know, if a bear attacked me, though I definitely would not use a knife, but if I had to use a knife, this is probably would be pretty high up on my list of knives that at least I currently own that I'd probably use to defend myself because I feel like it would be a pretty durable, pretty tanky blade that could take a lot of abuse and do a pretty good job at uh and do a pretty good job at protecting me against a, a bear attack. Now, obviously, so that's a pretty unrealistic uh, situation. I would definitely use my 44 well before I would ever get to my Adamus, but if I had to, or if the need came or arose, I would probably find myself reaching for this knife over something like a GEC pocket carver or, you know, something along those lines. So, like I said, this is a little bit of a uh, just fun video talking about the... Uh, Auto Adamus. It is a pretty cool blade, even if you don't EDC it, or even if you don't believe that this is the best Alaskan wilderness folder. I think it definitely is at least a contender for that, and if nothing else, it's just a pretty sweet blade. And like I said, I wanted something that was auto to highlight the fact that we can legally carry autos. I think that they oftentimes get kind of brushed under the rug, and they're kind of seen automatic knives. You know, are kind of seen as these blades that are like, oh, well, you know, they're not that functional they're not that useful they're not that purposeful and maybe you could make that argument about some otfs or maybe you know something like a benchmade infidel would definitely not be my first choice for a wilderness folder if you even call it a folder at that point but you know something like a wilderness pocket knife um this certainly is more functional than that and like i said because it is an auto access lock it has a great deal of durability. I have personally batoned, not this knife yet, but I had a 275, which was the non automatic version of this blade and uh, I definitely batoned that one and used it quite abusively and it never failed on me and never uh, ceased to stop working so these blades are definitely tanky and very durable a little bit overbuilt and uh, I think that's kind of necessary for the Alaskan wilderness so if nothing else guys hopefully you enjoyed seeing this pretty neat pretty cool bench made to or 2750 I should say almost said 275 but 2750 auto Adamus and uh, one thing I will say is that it definitely has quite the kick it's uh, hard to show in the video exactly but this this little blade when you let it go it has quite the kick to it when it comes out of that handle so pretty fun pretty cool blade I definitely enjoy it and look forward to using the CPM crew wear to its fullest so definitely carry it as well out in the Alaska wilds so this is going to be my go-to and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video hopefully you like the Alaskan content as a whole and as always guys God bless and I'm out